Hey, what's going on guys? A little trouble going on with my Scion XB here. That's the the VSC, the track light, and the check engine light came on. And I got the little code scanner here set up to read it. And the P, let me turn this motor off. The P301 code tells me that there's a cylinder misfire on number one. So, um, zero one, if it's zero two, then that's cylinder two, four, four. Um, so I've had a little bit of issues here. I bought a new fuel injector for that cylinder, a new coil. And before I get into that, we are going to, let me see where I have that part at. There we go. We're going to replace, because I've never done it before, the PCV valve. Apparently, if you don't replace one of these, um, I guess you're supposed to replace one of these every three, around three years. I'll put a link to a really awesome video um, from Scott, uh, I forget his last name, but uh, just going into detail about these and um, doing some research on the internet. If you don't replace one of these, it could cause uh, your car to idle rough. Uh, when it's when you're in you know not moving when you're when you're in drive and you're sitting there with the brakes on it that's when you're my car right now idles rough right when I start it and the code comes on and then it eases up it gets a little bit better but as you can tell I do have quite a few miles on the XB I have uh, looks like almost 270 thousand miles and I never changed this little Fake part here so I'm going to change this part and uh, clear the code and uh, just see what happens, you know, because I did read some research where this could cause your car to misfire. Um, and I did get this part at AutoZone and it was five bucks. It's pretty cheap. So you always want to charge, you know, maybe start with the cheapest uh, option first. So let's go and replace it. Okay, so I pulled the hose off and there is a lot of oil on this bad boy. And I could have sworn when I did my research before buying this part is that these can get plugged and it could cause an issue, as I mentioned before, with the uh, backfire. But the reason why I'm changing this first, because I've had a problem about maybe about a year ago where this motor, I do have a ton of miles. You saw it. I had, I don't know, 270. This motor has been burning a lot of oil. I change. It feels like I put for every 5,000 miles. I've, I've bought this car brand new. And I've always done oil changes every 5,000 miles. So it's been a great car. Um, the thing is, it's burning a lot of oil. I think every 5,000 miles, maybe I, I used to put maybe an extra quart because it was getting low. But now it feels like I'm putting maybe an extra three, four quarts, which is ridiculous for every 5,000 miles. So that's the other reason why I'm changing this part first is because if you're burning a lot of oil, and I could have sworn I read somewhere that if, it, if there's a lot of oil around it, there's an issue there. So I'm glad I'm changing that first. So let's get to it. All right. Well, here's the uh, the old one. It there's I mean, it looks like I'd say there's a good chance of it being plugged. And maybe there's a little problem. This might be a good reason why my oil is burning so much. And another thing I heard, if you shake these, you hear that? I heard that's a sign that they're no good if there's something loose inside there. I don't know what's going on, but, I mean, uh, hey, crap. I didn't know I was supposed to replace these every th around three years. So here's the new one. And it looks a little better. You know what? This one shakes. Something inside of it shakes also. So maybe I read some misguided information online. But um, it's pretty easy to take off, as you can tell. It goes right there. And in case you're wondering, it's a 19 millimeter socket you might need a deep socket or uh, a wrench uh, if you don't have this goddamn crossbar right here for the uh, in the way that would make using a wrench a little bit of a chore but really it's a piece of cake anybody can do it let's put this on okay so now I'm just gonna clear the code in the uh, for the engine light and then I'm gonna run the car and see if that issue pops up if it pops up again, that same code that we got right here, then let's uh, start by replacing the coil. Hey, what's up guys? So I'm just uh, gonna go on a little rant here. Um, it's Friday, I replaced the CSCV, that valve piece, 
that I bought from AutoZone last Saturday. And uh, right now I'm on tra in traffic on the 91 freeway, but the, uh, God, fucking God. the uh, so far the, the code hasn't come back. It's, um, I got, a, I decided I'm gonna return the fuel injector and the coil that I purchased because Man, the car runs fantastic. The code hasn't come back. That 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 five dollar piece. Uh, definitely, when you got to do a repair and you're troubleshooting, always start with the cheapest piece first. Uh, and like I mentioned, that was five bucks at the AutoZone. But the um, not only does it feel better with uh, not only is that code gone, but the car itself it's got more torque on the low end, which is great. I mean, I I'm at a stop sign and you know stoplight whatever. Give it a little gas and boom, got a little extra boost like it used to. So I'm, I was definitely way overdue. I just didn't know about that part. So change that part and uh, I'm good to go. That code uh, is, is gone. I'm gonna consider this one done with. The other thing I did do after I changed the, uh, after I changed the uh, that valve was I did a compression test uh, the next day and on the four cylinder. So the, Three of the cylinders, in case you guys want to do this, like I mentioned, I got 200, like you guys saw, I got about 270,000 miles uh, on the car. Three of the cylinders, the, the PSI was at 120. One of them was at 150 PSI. And from what I read online, anything under 100 is not good. It's going to be uh, trouble down the road with the motor, maybe piston rings. Uh, I don't know. Um, but that's pretty much where, where that was at. So I still got great compression in the car. And another thing I did want to mention, if maybe that that one cylinder code, if you want to maybe eliminate that it's not the coil, from what I read, what you want to do, it's pretty easy to take off, but you replace the coil with the maybe the, the cylinder next to it. Replace it. They're easy to take off, swap them. So that way, um, in case it does throw the code again, at least when you put the, uh, when you put your code reader thing on it, uh, it, it'll tell you that now it's, it'll tell you that it's the other cylinder. So in case you're troubleshooting, but it's quite fascinating. You know, what I read online was, uh, cylinder misfire. Okay. There's two things. There's spark and there's fuel. So it's either the coil or the fuel injector or it's one of those things, but I dove deeper and I found out that this little valve may have something to do with it. So obviously I bought that first and it it's fantastic. I still can't believe it actually. So if you're ever doing replacing that valve, just do it. It's you saw where it's at. It's on top of the motor. It's right there. I mean, the uh, just a ranch piece of cake, five bucks. So other than that, the car itself runs good. I've always changed the oil every 5,000 miles. The, I did have to do a couple of big, this is the second code I got. So the first code happened uh, at about the two, 230,000 mile mark, which is the P0012. That is a nightmare. It's the, it's, it has to do with the two uh, timing gears inside the motor, and it was about a $900 repair. You know, earlier today I was on YouTube, and I, there is a video on how to do that. And the video looked pretty good, but I just, I get a little paranoid when I start digging into the block. Uh, you know, I have a bad habit of forgetting a lot of things, so I feel like I'll probably forget one little uh, something, and there goes the motor. So I just par didn't want to do that. The So this is the second code that the... This is the second code that it happened, the, the P0012. Uh, the other thing I had with the car at about the 260,000 mile mark was I replaced the rack and pinion. And that was about, I don't remember, maybe six, seven hundred dollars Looked easy to do online, but I just don't want to mess with it. It's a little more than what I want to deal with. So, um, and then other than that, of course, typical maintenance stuff, the, the tires, and believe it or not, I am actually still on the original alternator and also the original water pump and, uh, and also the original starter. Um, so this has been a great car, uh, no complaints, and I don't know, if, leave your comments down below, and shit, if you got a code if you got a troubleshooting uh, cylinder number one code, you know 
hopefully this video will help you get rid of that with a five dollar goddamn five dollar part at the auto zone so uh, other than that have a great weekend peace out hey what's going on guys well it's a week later um, got a little bit of, I guess, I don't know if it's bad news. The code it did not come back still, but there's been a couple times where I have a slight, tiny little, it's a little rough idle there. Man, that airplane is annoying right now. Um, so uh, since the cylinder number one was the uh, issue at first, I decided I returned the fuel injector. I gotten a return for the coil, but I just haven't. I kept it, thank goodness, so I'm just going to stick with it. Here's the old one. Uh, just by inspecting it, it's, uh, it looks fine. You can also, you know, like I mentioned earlier, figure out if it's actually the um, coil by switching one to the other. But I figured, ah, just, just throw the part on. I still got it, and hopefully that goes away. So, I mean, they're pretty easy to uh, change. You just got to snap off the little uh, attachment there and pop it back in there. And it's, uh, I believe, number 10 millimeter socket put it back in place and that's it I'm gonna do that right now and then uh, drive it around for a week uh, let's give it until next Saturday and I'll let you guys know how it's doing hey what's up guys okay it's Friday I'm still uh, trying to it's Friday traffic that's for sure um, I, you know I don't remember exactly where I left off but I ended up buying some fuel injectors I remember I returned one of them I think the cost was like 60 bucks um, and I decided to buy some remanufactured ones from eBay they were eh, I think they were about $70 for four of them which is a pretty good deal I thought plus the sell you know you look at the seller rating and uh, he's apparently sold a bunch of them and the pricing shit it was right it was pretty good for four pieces 70 bucks um, so I'm going to install that tomorrow uh, for the Scion here. So far, um, the the code, it's another week of driving. The code has not come back on, which is great news. But there is still that slight little, little, little vibrating annoyance, which is driving me crazy. As you can tell, as this video goes on and on, but we're going to get to the root of it because I can't stand it. And I'm sure some of you guys are probably, well, I hope you're not in the same boat. If you are, then I guess we're in the same boat together. But so basically uh, what I decided to do with the fuel injectors, uh, you know, I looked into it a little bit yesterday. They look pretty easy to change. The one thing I do want to mention is there is a, um, I guess you got to release pressure from the line. And I went to the auto zone and there's uh, a specific tool to help open you release the pressure line so you can attach it release the pressure take off the uh the main rail for the injectors and then uh pull the injectors out and uh do it that way so that's where i'm pretty much at with everything and the car you know it's it's got a lot of miles i'm a little irritated too because now i'm getting really picky with everything i feel like there's a little bit of a hesitation with the pedal uh, so I got some fuel inject, I'm mean, an uh, air filter. I got a K&N on the car. Uh, so I'm gonna clean the air filter also. Uh, replaced injectors on Sunday, this is Friday. Um, and we'll see where that goes. The other thing I do wanna mention was I did buy a little, uh, another part for the car and I put it on Wednesday. It was, uh, I forget what the piece is called right now off the top of my head, but where, uh, I'll show you guys tomorrow, but Basically, um, the reason why I went ahead and bought that car was if you go to partsgeek.com, uh, that's one of the places where I get my parts, also Rock Auto and, you know, AutoZone.com and eBay. And you want to save a couple bunts, bucks and not get ripped off also, so you can kind of browse around on one. But basically, partsgeek.com, I did like their website how when I enter the year and the make of this car, it tells me... Uh, the most common parts used the the most common parts used for this the most common parts that have been replaced in your vehicle so one of the things I did was a lot of the uh, like the, the the little sensors uh, as far as the emissions as far as the intake those sort of things I went through the whole list and I put that part into a Google search and then after that I put symptoms to see if 
whatever it is I'm dealing with was an issue or not, but, um, so one of the things that popped up was this part tomorrow that I'll show you guys tomorrow when I, or Sunday when I popped the hood, what it was called. And, but I basically went through, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, the most common parts that your car is, is, has been replaced. So you go ahead and I went through them all, click symptoms after that, just to see if anything that sounded like what I was dealing with was, you know, they're trying to find a little shortcut here. So basically there's that one little piece I'll show you guys that it may uh, be a problem, but so far uh, it's helped and, you know, I'll show you guys later. But um, I guess that's all I got for now. Uh, so I'll see you guys on Sunday and uh, let's get this damn thing over with. Okay, so this is the purge valve. The Purge uh, remind me of uh, Rick and Morty. That's a pretty good episode. But this uh, it's pretty easy to change. There's two hoses here. This is an emission type thing, and it was pretty easy to change. Um, you know, like I mentioned, PartsGeek.com. When I went through all the parts, this was one of the items that I thought, oh, maybe this is something that's involved with uh, my issues. But I just went ahead and changed it anyway. Two hundred seventy thousand miles. I figured, screw it. I think it was like forty-five bucks. So eh, it's pretty cheap, and I feel like the when the AC kicks on. Uh, the idle is a bit better. Um, it's more level instead of like bogging down like it's going to die. So that's where that's at. Now, the fuel injectors, uh, it looks like the fuel rail. There's one bolt right there, and then there's another bolt over here to take the rail off. You got to unplug the, the four sensors to each injector and then I'm going to remove this piece here and this piece here and this one over here just to kind of get this out of the way I feel like this is in the way before I try to mess with it here um, and as I scoot over here the the fuel line that's kind of where it's at and it goes this way and then here it is this piece right here Okay, so this piece kind of snaps off. I think this is just uh, to help it stay on. And then the, I, this is what I bought at AutoZone. I'm assuming since it's such a small car, small engine, it's probably the smaller one that needs to take off the fuel line. So I'm gonna try to snag that on there and take that off to depressurize the fuel. And then after that, then I'm going to pop out the injectors and um, let's see what happens. Okay, so you have to undo this clip right here and there's another one on this side just to kind of loosen this. Actually, I didn't unclip it. Thirdly, I got pissed and I just broke that thing. And I figured, same thing on this end, I figured I'd just zip tie it later, just get it out of the way. Uh, you know how it gets when you start getting pissed. But uh, it's actually, I don't know what the deal was with this thing. It was just a chore to try to get it done, clip it, and I figured, oh, it's kind of in the, it's just there anyway, so, eh, whatever, I'll put a cable tie on it. But the, I do want to note that the injectors, I unscrewed all four because I want to get the, these cables kind of out of the way, this one right here, and then I'll probably take this thing off just to get out of the way of the fuel rail. The fuel rail is right there. Uh, the clips were really easy to take off and I was a little paranoid about that because you know don't want to get pissed and break one of the things off but basically just want to it's a little loose but the injector in there moves you know it moves around so just want to squeeze in on one side and just want to pinch it and then it should come out that's how I did the other two ah, there we go so don't, don't worry about unclipping them. If you just kind of pinch it at the top, it should start coming out for you. Ah, there we go. Take these other two damn things off. So it looks like I got that bolt and that bolt to take off and then I can move the fuel rail. Wait a minute. I 
think that's it. Oh yeah, there's a bolt underneath there. That looks like it's it's a it's the intake. So I, I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna mess with these two. And then the the fuel rail over here. I'm trying to get that tool, this piece. And right in there, it was kind of a little cramped area. So there's a bolt right underneath. You had to move, and now I can move it around a little bit. And um, hopefully I can get it in there. If not, then there's uh, there's another bolt right there that I'd have to undo so I could probably move this thing out of the way a little bit and then I'd probably get that damn thing in there so um, that's where I'm at okay so ignore this damn piece I bought from the for this part right here it just would not clip in there I had a chore and it turns out one side was small see this side is smaller this other side's bigger and it should be the same or this size should be bigger and this should be smaller is what it looks like according to the these clips I even cut it to try to rig it in there right but um, there's these little tabs in there and they kind of push the inside of there in order for you to pop it out but it didn't work out proper so I just screwed it took unbolted it as you can see my fuel rails off now I'm a little concerned uh, I have four injectors with a bunch of dirt everywhere so I'm gonna get the vacuum uh, the dry vac and just try to suck all of this out and then I must remove these remove these Hey, I'm a noob. Looks pretty damn clean now. Now let's take one of these goddamn bastards off. Oh shit, that was easy. Alright, so screw these damn things. Just, uh, these are the fuel injectors. And, uh, it's pretty easy to pop them all off. The one thing I heard when you want to go ahead and put the new ones on is you want to soak the these rubber rings on the new ones uh, with a little bit of gasoline because that acts as a lubricant to help uh, prevent a leak when you insert it back into the rail. So it's getting kind of late and I got some chicken wings I got to finish making so I'm going to eat some chicken wings and wrap this up tomorrow morning with the new new ones put it back together and okay so I got the the four new ones in there and I, I decided to just tighten the bolt on the left because it felt like it was a little more tight over here you had to really do some wiggling with the rail and reason being is because even though you're able to kind of bend this the, the fuel hose over here put that back Even though you're able to bend this rubber hose a little bit um, right here let me see there we go the it's kind of wrapped the the valve cover is wrapped around it so it, this won't come off freely so that just uh, added to the installation a little bit made it a little bit of a chore but not too bad it's pretty easy so now I'm just gonna tighten everything back up Okay, so right now I turned the car on. I guess you want to turn it on for like 15, 20 seconds so the fuel can build pressure in the line. Um, I try to take a look in there while it's on. If it's building uh, pressure, maybe I'd see a leak, but there's just too much. It's too tucked away in there to see anything. So I'll have to turn it on and drive it around for the rest of the day and see how it goes. Um, one thing I forgot to... I put everything back and I kind of screwed myself. There's a... This little bolt, this little bracket, let me see, uh, right in there. I'm not putting it back on because I, I put everything else on. It was actually I flipped it around, and the way it's the way it's made, it's made to be flipped around the other way, so it would push the line off before you screw it. And I flipped it around the other way. Now it pushes it in a little further, and because uh, if it was in a little further, it would the fuel line would hit the uh, 
where the seat where this piece went so it would just bump right now it's really tucked but it's not on proper so um, I'll probably come back to that later I'll just leave it off but you know just don't screw yourself with that the other thing I want to mention I don't know if I mentioned there's the mass airflow sensor right there I have cleaned that also and that didn't make a difference so that was uh, not an issue here ever so um, okay I'm gonna start it up and drive it around all right so here's what the bottom of them look like I uh, really can't tell if they're bad or not that just really they all look kind of all the three on the left this right one looks a little I don't know, it looks a little di different than the rest of them, so I don't know if this is the one that's causing the problem. I assume it, it's that cylinder number one, uh, just because the other three look the same. So, uh, I started the car up and took it around the block here, and, um, I need to tell that bird to shut up. Um, so far it ran fantastic, uh, no leaks or anything, um, so I'm going to drive it for the rest of the week and we'll see how she does. So, what's up XB fans? Bad news. It's about a month later and it turns out head gasket. So, um, I guess word of advice, if you throw the, the P0012 code, which is that timing belt, uh, the timing gear with the two gears and with that big chain inside the motor, I remember that repair cost me, I think I mentioned around 900 bucks, and I got that, that happened about the 240,000 mile mark. So, instead of getting the head gasket repaired, uh, what I went and did was, uh, let me see if I have it here, I don't have the receipt with me. I, I live out here in Southern California, so there's a couple of shops out here where they sell those Japanese motors with about 50,000 miles on them. So, went ahead and gave that a try. Um, got one of those put in here. Um, it seemed like it was in a, a, the process. Some of these shops, I, I don't know. They're it's just a chore getting somebody on the phone that really makes you feel good about you know spending some cash and doing a motor swap. But it's been about uh, I think three four weeks, and um, so far the car runs good. I think it's money well invested for a used motor, and you just want to stretch the life out of the car a little bit more. I mean, my my car's got over it's ran so good for so long I figured hey, I get a block with like 50,000 miles in it throw it in there and then see how that transmission does we'll keep our fingers crossed so we'll see where that goes but the cost of that was um, 1200 bucks with labor so it's fairly inexpensive so if you have that P0012 code that cost me 900 bucks at about the 240,000 mile, mile mark if I, you know, if I should have maybe just, I just didn't even think about the used motor. Uh, so I went that route. And so let me tell you what happened. The, it changed the fuel injectors and, and uh, you know, they actually leaked later in the afternoon when I went to check it again. So what you want to do is you want to remove, just a little tip, you want to remove the valve cover on the top because it kind of wraps around the fuel bar and it gets kind of annoying trying to wiggle it and put it in place and I think that's where the leak comes. If you were able to put it straight on straight down so that way everything goes on even that would maybe save you headaches so before you just dive into it a little tip take off that so you can remove the get that rail out proper so everything after I removed everything I think I remember maybe earlier in this video this turned out to be a long video but I think I remember there was an issue with the radiator as far as uh, I kept putting water in the motor and it would keep uh, there was an issue with the with the fluid I couldn't figure out thermostat I replaced the cap I don't know what's going on there was another little part that goes into the block that I think measures the internal water temperature and then does a few things to the computer but I so what happened was I, I didn't think head gas because I checked my motor oil and I like I mentioned before I always chain my motor oil 5,000 miles boom boom forever when I bought this car brand new I'm gonna stretch it out three hundred thousand dollars on uh, three hundred thousand miles on the same block and I came up short but pretty close the issue was the <clears throat> my belief is I had a small a small leak um, it, it basically pushed combustion gas into the fluid so it was pushing air blowing and putting pressure on the system and that's why the water 
would continue to go into my overfill and push water out of there, uh, which drove me crazy. I, I, that's why I thought, radio cap, what's going on? But um, so that pretty much did it. And the reason why I figured that out was in the afternoon when I did the fuel filters, I looked at the radiator fluid, the, the, the stuff in the overfill, and it looked a little bit more a little foggy than usual. Usually, typically, it's clear or it's got a little radio, a little light green to it, a little more muddy kind of look. And I said, "Oh, that's not good." So I looked at the uh, thermostat. Uh, th uh, I took off the uh, radiator cap. <laughs> Sorry, took off the radiator cap, and I could tell there were a little. It looked like little. It just looked like there was a little bit of dirt in there, uh, a little bit of kind of mud. Very, and the color was different. So I did some more research. I guess if you online trying to troubleshoot that problem basically when you give the car you know the little thing right there is next to where you pull the uh this this uh, you can give it more gas the throttle boom boom give it gas and uh i guess if you have your radar cap and you do that the it'll blow water out so that's what it did and uh, i did some more research and i figured that was the problem so the other thing i do want to tell you the problem I had the, the longest time I could remember with that being the problem was when I went to my radiator cap uh, since the issue was popping up since I always felt like there's something going on there when you go to remove the radiator cap you crack it open and it'll go Shh. there's like extra pressure on that I don't think it's supposed to be like that and I wasn't sure because you know I checked the radiator every once in a great while well, I don't remember exactly but I, I thought that was a little unusual now I got the new motor in now the radiators everything's running um, the water is nice and green but now when I check the radiator cap I take it off no noise no additional pressure and that pressure of obviously it was the X X the gas the air pushing out of that little exhaust leak little uh, head gasket leak into the water and just pushing everything out so slowly my belief is that little tiny I had a small leak it got worse it caused the uh, misfire code in that section that's why when I changed the spark plug it did nothing I changed the um, coil same thing I changed the fuel injector felt like it got a little better overall but you know I replaced them all so um, and I didn't have enough time frame after that uh, you went know, the leaks basically I found it later that afternoon with the water being like that and obviously the radiator that's how it was so uh, that's pretty much all I got for you so hopefully this has been pretty good and thanks for letting me vent about this problem and I hope everybody learned something today so uh, I do want to give a shout out to the the homies, the Japanese homies, uh, specifically if you go on Instagram, if you're into the Cyan XB, you go on Instagram, a like club, uh, I think Club XB, there's some guys on there that got these XBs, these boxes decked out, man, they look tight, and they got some stuff going on with the LED lights going off of the headlights and the taillight, a little way too much for what I got, what I need, but it's interesting, but yeah, other than that, uh, good luck, and uh, Merry Christmas.